Now we'll go into uh, uh, the demo uh, where we will see some of the concepts uh, for tensor data. Okay, so tensor data we have seen, right? Now, uh, how we can define the tensor data and, and, and how we can use different functions that is as similar to your NumPy, NumPy functions that is similar. So you do use, so you will use Colab. I hope you are seeing the uh, window for browser. So here we are using Colab to run this previous, uh, let's say, uh, TensorFlow 1. Now, to use TensorFlow, you just need to import. So if you are using local machine, you need to install TensorFlow and you need to check which versions you are using. So TensorFlow version is very, very important to, to confirm so that you are not using TensorFlow 1. And, and here in all the tutorials, uh, demo sessions, we'll use TensorFlow 2.x, any versions up to two. Okay, that is fine. So if you are using uh, your local machine, uh, you should ensure that you're using TensorFlow version greater than 2.0. Now tensors, as I was mentioning, defining tensors is very easy, so basically, this is a string tensor, which we are defining as variables, right? Now this is a single dimensional scalar with rank zero string, okay? And this number is again another rank zero tensor, which is again a variable, floating variable. Now if you can see that tf dot data type you can use, okay? And several data types you are using. Now, these data types is is very important in model training because in the previous class also we have seen that with mixed precision training we can enhance or improve the performance uh, manifold and and using different types of data and 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 exploring your design model uh, is very very important to see how you are improving your performance both performance and uh, how it affects your accuracy now rank, as I was mentioning that if you want to see the rank, let's say I want to see this uh, TensorFlow strength. So basically uh, uh, this, this is a single dimension and, and this is two dimensional, uh, uh, right? So um, the rank of rank two tensor is basically NumPy2, okay? so two rank. So this is the two dimensional uh, tensor. So you have two rank and uh, shape of the tensor so it's rank two dot shape now two rank means it has two dimension and in each dimension you have two elements so two by two is essentially your shape right so understanding shape of the tensors and rank of the tensors these two are very important because to compile the model that you have defined you will get different shape and ranks of the tensors so rank is essentially how many dimensions are there so let's say you, if you are training the model using batch, so how many batches you are using in each layer that will come as rank, okay? And the shape, then how many uh, elements in each dimension, so that that is the shape that you. Now changing the shape, you can use reshape method to actually change the shape. So here we have this once created shape as one, two, three, right? So all the uh, uh, elements in this tensor is essentially ones. Now I want to reshape this one, two, three to two, three, one. Okay, so tensor reshape and tensor three is reshaping to three minus one. So minus one is telling you how many elements will be there automatically in this dimension. So here in the first dimension we have one, Second dimension we have two, third dimension we have three. First two, three, one. Here we are saying first dimension we have three elements and in the second dimension we do not know, infer it from the ratio. Okay. So you, same minus one you have used before in Python. So printing this, the tensor one, tensor two, tensor three, that is the uh, different tensors that you have initialized. So you, you can see one, two, three shape, right? Once uh, one 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 uh, completely one element one two three, 
tensor, the second tensor was actually 231, right? So uh, 3 and 2, so 2 total of elements and 3 elements in these two elements and total of, uh, sorry, 3 elements and, and 1 actually uh, element in each uh, dimension, right? So 1 element in each dimension. Now, in the third, you can see that the shape already taken as two because we had had minus one. So it will automatically compute what, how many elements will be the second dimension. So this is basically three rows and two columns uh, by matrix. Slicing tensors. So this is also important if you're using uh, different data types in different shapes. So basically uh, here we have defined one 2D tensor. And then we are actually selecting, let's say, third element from the first row, selecting the first row completely, selecting the first column, selecting the second and fourth column, and printing all the column values here. And then we are uh, selecting column in one, one in row two and three. So column one in row two and three. So basically column one from two and three. Okay. So this is the column one value zero and from one to two, so basically zero, one, two, so basically two and three row, you are uh, accepting. So basically, if you see the outputs, you will see the tensors, uh, uh, whatever tensors you have got. So first we are accessing the element from uh, third element, which was three, right? So three, and then you are accessing the uh, first row, then the first column, then the second and fourth row and then uh, the first column in row two and row three right so this is the first column in row two and row three and you can see the shapes and and different data types that are being used okay now different types of tensors are there variable constants uh, sparse tensor and placeholder placeholder is not uh, recommended also in the in the uh, two point uh, X versions. So you can go to this uh, uh, link to see more of this usage of tensors. So this is just few basics that I wanted to cover for the tensors because these tensors we will use almost in all the layers that we want to define in, in, in the model. Okay? Now coming to the model. So what we have told that you can define your models by using sequential API, you can use functional API, plus, plus, plus. So basically customized callbacks, uh, your customized optimizers and so on, and then subclasses. And in this tutorial, we will see the usage of Keras API with sequential parallel, right? So importing the necessary uh, uh, version. So now percentage TensorFlow version uh, 2.x, this comment is necessary if you have multiple versions available inside your system for TensorFlow. And it will actually uh, force uh, to use the 2.x version uh, level. We are just importing then the Keras, the uh, API uh, functional, API, uh, the, the Keras high level API from TensorFlow. We are not using the TensorFlow, the uh, Keras uh, IO uh, library, which is the native Keras. We are not using. We are using TensorFlow. Helper libraries from NumPy and Matplotlib just to work with arrays and plotting. Now in the data set, you can see we are using Keras data set here, okay? not the TensorFlow data set. So all these things you should keep in mind while you are uh, programming uh, or, or doing the model definition. Because most of the students or, or researchers I have seen that uh, they just copy some code from somewhere else, but they do not know what kind of pipelines that are being used because TensorFlow has several options, several combinations, several compositions of different APIs. So if you're not aware of which API you are using, you will not be able to accelerate your training. So that is why here we are using Keras, just keeping in mind, okay, just uh, because to be sure uh, uh, that 
we are just extracting, unpacking the training images levels and test images levels from the fashion image dataset, that dataset we have seen also previously. And we are using uh, dot shape uh, attribute to see how, how many images that train images have, right? So after downloading, so basically we have downloaded everything. Now you can see that 6,000, that is the number of samples that is available, 28 by 28. So you can see the uh, the correspondence with the NumPy app, okay? So we have got 60,000 images. So train images just to see what is there in let's say 23 by 23 pixel of the first image. Okay. You can see 194. So the values here actually varies from zero to 255. So basically uh, what is to be done to be pre-processing in the pre-processing part, you just need to uh, normalize it with 255. So that is what we are doing here. The same thing you have seen in the data loader for the Python uh, PyTorch uh, for the training sets and, and um, uh, test sets of pre-processing of the data. Class names we are extracting and saying that these many classes will be there and these are the names of different classes, right? We have extracted the models. Now data pre-processing part is essentially just normalizing. Okay? Now again, all these operations are happening inside your CPU. Okay, and we are using simple NumPy arrays and NumPy operations. Okay, so simple map that is operated on the array. Okay. Building models. So now we will try to build the models. You can see that we are using Keras.sequential API. Sequential API for beginners. And all the models, uh, model layers, what are defined for, let's say you are targeting classification problem, you are targeting LNP problem, as I mentioned. So there are numerous numbers of layers that is already defined in Keras. So Keras TensorFlow, you go to that website for Keras TensorFlow and see how many layers that is already available in the sequential API. So as layers, we are using flatten layer and dense layer. Flatten is essentially the helper function to flatten your input array. Okay, so this is exactly the input layer. So in the PyTorch also, so every time you will just uh, need to uh, see the uh, uh, equivalence in the in the PyTorch. Okay, so you just visualize whatever we have seen so far and what we are seeing in uh, for the classes. So in the dense layer, so this is the dense layer. Basically, this is the fully connected dense layer or linear layer that you have seen so far. Right? So again, I am mentioning that you go to Keras sequential API and see what are the layers are. Output uh, uh, tensor uh, dimensions. So 10 is the output uh, number of neurons that I want from this dense layer because 10 classes are there and uh, Activation, ReLU, again, all are predefined. Activation, softmax. So basically, we are just defining these layers. So dense layer. So it will take whatever you are giving input from here and give output as 128 neurons with this activation. And then we will have the second dense layer. So two layer definition model that we are defining here. And you can see in the output, we are having 10 classes here. So this is just as simple of definition of model. And there is nothing else you need to do. This is very simple sequential API. Definition of layer one, two, three that you can see here. Uh, but what is most important is that model.compile. Now, this is the eager execution. So when you are using this compile, then at this time itself, you are actually compiling your model. Without running the model, you are actually analyzing what are the attributes for the layers that you have defined, is that correct or not? All the parameters that you have used for def defining your layers. So I did not know. So if you are working elsewhere, if you are not using compile, then you are not essentially taking the uh, efficiency of eager execution. As long as uh, you have defined it and run it, the graph is already 
defined and evaluated for compile. So basically in the compile, we have seen all the things that you have defined is correct or not and compile check, compile term check you can do. It. Then if we just, so everything is okay, there's no error, you can fit it for the training images and training levels for this many number of epochs. So you can see how easy it is to define one model uh, training with, so defining layers with sequential API and training model with fit method that you have seen in the, in the uh, slides. So on what training images, train levels and epochs, that's it. And, and it will train it, uh, but before that you have already checked your model is correct. And evaluating the model is again, it is 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 easy with the evaluate method. Okay, so model dot evaluate. So all the things we are doing here is sequential API, and and we are not using subclassing or functional API. So we will see subclassing and functional API with the different uh, data distribution strategy that are available in TF dot data in the next class, but just get familiarized with the, the simple uh, beginners uh, APIs that are available with TF. So we'll go in, in, in advanced uh, model definition in the coming class. So you should be aware of these simple models definition. Now printing the testing accuracy. So all this, so when you are actually uh, calculating the evaluation, you are getting the tuple for the loss and accuracy and you can print it, okay? So this is, all, all these are actually abstracted. You do not need to define anything. Uh, so basically if you want to propose the output or not, that also you can define. Now uh, uh, we, can, we can actually test that. So basically testing accuracy that we have evaluated, but to test, you can call this predict method to get the predictions and you can use these predictions. So basically, which prediction uh, index has the highest prediction uh, probably, that's it, right? So you can you can uh, get it, right? Which is the arc max. Okay. Right, so now uh, we want to verify the predictions. So basically, uh, whether your ninth level is actually correct or not. So here is simple function. This is nothing to do with training or evaluating. So this is just, we are checking whether uh, the, the ninth level is fine or not, accessing the, the particular uh, index, okay? Uh, indexed image. Okay. And you can go to these uh, links for detailed uh, definitions of uh, or different optimizations that you can use in the, in the TensorFlow and so on. You can also visit uh, TensorFlow sequential API to see uh, what are the uh, uh, what are the flexibilities you can have, like how much you can go with the fit and predict and, and evaluate. Okay. Now we will see a bit about how we can actually compute in GPU. So basically, this is uh, this is a bit different from defining the device for uh, in, in PyTorch and transferring the data into your GPU and, and model in, inside the GPU. Here I actually have much more uh, flexibility in terms of accessing uh, or, or offloading the tasks or pipeline of your training module uh, in, inside your GPU. So that, that way the distributed training of, of TensorFlow is, is much more efficient. So in this class, we'll just see how to define the GPU and then how to define the uh, program codes, which will go to your GPU or TPU rather, depending on the device you want to access or CPU, I don't know. So here, uh, accessing to your, uh, importing your module and then device name is essentially tf.ts.gpu device name. So whether, what kind of GPU is available, GPU zero, if not found, it will raise the error. So you just change the runtime type to GPU if you're using Cola, right? And if you have already uh, in your local machine, if you have GPU, then well and good. So now in the uh, in the TensorFlow, uh, uh, how you will offload the task, right? 
So basically device name we have gathered if whether it is a GPU or it is a CPU or it is a, uh, uh, so uh, for the GPU uh, we have not written the code here. So we'll just see the CPU and GPU here, TPU maybe we'll see in the next class. Now for the CPU, so basically div CPU, this function I will run. So basically with tpu.tf.device, if it is CPU, then this segment of code I want to run. So what segment of code I am running here? Again, you can see that keras.layers.convolution2. So this is again defined in keras.layers. And some input random image I'm uh, creating with 100 batches of 100 by 100 into three channels. Okay, so this is the tensor dimension. Okay, so again, the rank, the shape. Okay, so you, you, you just uh, correlate to the idea of the tensors that uh, the predefined concept. So basically this is giving the output of your convolution 2D uh, of this random, on this random image. Okay. Again, uh, this is what kind of layer that I will not tell you now, but this is just I'm running one layer of one model just to see whether it is running in CPU and then and, and another layer we are defining here, made GPU, and that also we are running in inside our GPU. Okay. So we we'll call these two methods to run both in CPU and GPU the same uh, dimensions of inputs we are running here, and actually just to see what kind of achievement we are getting. We have called these two methods and printing uh, the time taken by the uh, two devices, right? So uh, as you can see, we are getting 67 times just to uh, simulate one layer only. Yeah. So, uh, but you can see, right? So defining functions with 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 devices like which device will run this piece of code. That flexibility is something that we will exploit in distributed uh, training. Okay, so basically we'll distribute, uh, of course there are several abstractions of the APIs, you may not uh, exactly define like these functions, but this is giving you an idea that, yes, we can customize our pipeline much more efficiently with, with what kind of device it will use. Let's see half, Tensor processing you need available, GPU you need available, CPU available, multi-core CPU in multiple nodes. Now this is where we will see that whether this piece of code you want to run in, in GPU or this piece of code you want to run in TPU, right? And then numerous examples will be there to, uh, to explore this distribution strategy, of course. As I was mentioning, that there are several abstractions of these abstract uh, of the strategies that you can use directly without defining that this piece of code will go to this piece of uh, device. But the strategies in underlying these are the techniques that will be used to actually uh, distribute with, with different strategies that we will use. So with this, we will conclude uh, today's session and then.